God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died just to buy.
we want to welcome you again to the Wednesday night Bible studies of the uh, Stonecrest Church of Christ. We are delighted each uh, Wednesday evening when you join uh, our church uh, as we gather around to uh, study uh, the Word of God. We affectionately call this hour uh, Wednesdays uh, in the Word, and we are delighted that uh, you have joined us again on tonight. We have been uh, uh, for the last several weeks um, sharing with you some outstanding messages from our recent uh, Issachar conference from uh, incredible and outstanding uh, speakers of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight, um, uh, we feature a good, close, personal friend of mine, one I certainly uh, admire uh, for his uh, proclamation, uh, his passion uh, for not only the preaching of the word of God, but for the ministry uh, of God. Uh, founded uh, uh, the Hope Church of Christ uh, several uh, years ago, uh, is building uh, those believers up uh, in the, uh, the body of Christ. Uh, having uh, Daniels uh, preaches for the Hope Church of Christ in Hollywood, Florida. Be blessed by his message as we were uh, a few weeks ago. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Surely uh, we rise and give God the honor, the praise, and every ounce of the glory, for we realize, we recognize, and we even testify that God alone is worthy to be praised. I'm Alvin Daniels, Jr., Senior Minister of the Hope Church of Christ. It is my honor, it is my privilege to be able to present on this wonderful platform, the Issachar Conference. I want to thank uh, the great uh, man of God and a person of Dr. Richard Barclay for this wonderful opportunity, for this preaching privilege that I have to share the word of God from the word of God and so that somebody somewhere can be edified with thankful and grateful to the visionary that cast the vision uh, for this Issachar conference, this platform, this medium by which we are encouraged uh, by the word of the Lord. And I'm thankful that this is my second time uh, presenting on this platform. And Dr. Barclay, want to thank you. want to thank uh, all of those that are connected to you. want to thank your staff, your wonderful wife. Uh, and we want to give God the glory for your ministry as well. My task, my lot, my labor. But my assignment is to talk to you tonight, today, from the subject, when God leaves you leftovers. And this is, uh, of course, a presentation uh, that will be done uh, really at the behest of the Spirit of God. But it is in light, in the context of us finding our place uh, in the aftermath of our pandemic. Uh, and we know that this pandemic has uh, proven the church, it has tested the church, it has tested the metal of every man, woman, boy and girl, especially those of us uh, who are of faith. So I wanna present from John's Gospel tonight uh, in that contest, John's Gospel chapter number six. And I want to read a pericope into your hearing on tonight that will serve as the platform and a predicate for what we want to share for the next uh, 20 uh, minutes. Uh, and I want to pick up our text at uh, John's Gospel, chapter number six. And uh, let's look at verse number nine through verse number 14, John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 9 through verse number of 14. If you have that, say amen. Ready to read, say bless the word. And the word is blessed and is amplified like this. There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus says, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place so that the men sat down in number about 5,000. Jesus took 
the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those that were sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted so when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is Loss, and therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This truly is a prophet who is come into uh, the world. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I prescribe tag and topic and tag uh, on tonight is when God leaves you leftovers when God leaves you leftovers you may be seated uh, in the presence of, of the Lord brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen um, COVID-19 pandemic uh, was uh, in no uncertain terms uh, a crisis that, that challenged us on many different levels uh, it was a, a crisis, Dr. Barclay, that tested the, the hearts, the minds, uh, and the souls of men. And I speak to you uh, in terms or in, in context of our faith in God, because there is nothing uh, that will tell on our faith like a good crisis, a catastrophe, a calamity that would happen in a season of our lives that would reveal the faith and the belief and the trust of men, women, boys, and girls in the God uh, that they serve. Anybody can boast uh, that I love the Lord because he heard uh, my cry. Anybody can boast that I have faith and trust in God. But when the rubber meets the road, like a crisis, like a pandemic, like a famine, like a pestilence, then what we're made of is truly being made manifest and revealed before all. Such is the case on the backside of a desert place right here in John's gospel, uh, chapter number six. And in John's gospel, chapter number six is one of the wonderful miracles and wonders as wrought by our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. It is one that stands out head and shoulders above the rest. Why? It is the feeding of the 5,000. And uh, there is something uh, wonderful about this miracle, this sign and this wonder that causes us to embrace Christ in a way that we've not embraced him before. Why? Because we find out that Christ in the midst of our crisis can not only meet us at our knees, but God can also exceed our needs. It is demonstrative of what the apostle Paul said over there in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20 now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think according to the power that worketh even in us and this is a dramatization of that power of God that can meet us at our need and that can supersede and exceed any expectation that we have of Almighty God on the backside of this wilderness in this desert place, in this desolate place, in this wilderness of source, here is Christ Jesus with 5,000 men alone. And when we extrapolate from 5,000, we don't uh, count women and children. We have a surplus of 20,000 people in a desert place, in a desolate place. And brothers and sisters, if this ain't no crisis, there's not a such thing as a crisis. Whenever you got 5,000 folk that's been with Jesus for three long days and nobody has a lunch and nobody has a buffet and ain't no restaurant nowhere, there is no Piccadilly, there is no Morrison, there is no KFC, no Mega D, and no, uh, no Burger King, no BK, and there is no place where we can go and grab a meal and we only have two fish 
and five barley loaves don't tell me that this is not a crisis. So the text opens up at chapter number six where Jesus is setting the tone. Jesus is testing his own disciples to see how much faith they will have in him in the midst of a, a crisis. And you already know this text. You already know this context. You already know this passage and even this pericope. But what my assignment is tonight, what Dr. Barclay wanted me to give to you tonight, is what happens when God leaves you leftovers and I don't have to give you the whole text and the whole context I don't have to give you all of chapter number six uh, from one to verse number 14 all I need to do is make a beeline at verse number 12 because verse number 12 if I spend the next 15 minutes at verse number 12 verse number 12 would give us everything uh, that we need why brother Davis because verse number 12 it's really the prescribed outcome of Jesus Christ. What did you say, Brother Dan? I said that verse number 12 is really the tenet. Verse number 12 is really the axiom. Verse number 12 is really the thing and the point that Christ is trying to drive home. Verse number 12 is really the thing that we walk away with. Verse number 12 is really the lesson that every one of us have to learn. Verse number 12 ought to be the outcome from the pandemic that we've been into for the last two years. Verse number 12 ought to be the sentiment, the mindset. Verse number 12 ought to shape our theology. Verse number 12 ought to shape our homiletics. Verse number 12 ought to shape our paradigm as we move forward by faith. And the question is, what happens when God leaves you leftovers? And listen on tonight at verse number 12. At verse number 12, uh, the Bible said that you know everybody got full. Everybody got on swole. And they couldn't even button their jacket up. And um, everybody got everything uh, that they needed. Amen, somebody. Ain't nothing like a, a, a fish fry for people that serve God. Y'all know how we do at the fish fry. We eat all of the fish that we want to eat. And then we want to take some place uh, back home. But watch here. The miracle ain't just that Christ took a last lunch, two fish, five barley loaves, looked toward heaven, gave thanks to Almighty God because he wanted them to understand that the blessings come from above. And the miracle, the sign, the wonder, the multiplication of the bread and even the fish came between the blessing and the breaking. Somewhere between the blessing of the bread and the blessing of the fish and the breaking of the fish, the fish and the bread multiplied so that 5,000 plus people can eat. Not only did they eat, but they also were filled to the brim. Not only were they filled, but they also had some left. Y'all know the text already, but I'm trying to get to verse number 12, but y'all ain't helping me right here. Verse number 12 says, so that when they were filled, I'm trying to answer the question tonight. What happened when God uh, leave you left over? I'm trying to answer that question. It's right here at verse number 12. So when they were full, text says feel, but we say full. Y'all know how we do it. When they were full, that means they on swole. That, that means uh, they about to take a nap. Y'all know how we do right here at verse number 12. When they were filled, he said to the, watch, what he do right here now? Because y'all can't miss this. Y'all cannot miss this. It's right here at verse number 12. So when they were filled, what happened? Hurry up and tell us, Brother Dane. Uh, Bible says, he said to the disciples, go out jungle. Watch this. And gather up the fragments left over um, that remain so that nothing is lost. Okay, I can tell y'all didn't get that because y'all ain't looking right. I can't even see y'all and y'all didn't look right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Verse number 12. Watch this. Uh, there is a there is a connect 
and the correlation between living and verse number 12. See, y'all thought that the miracle was multiplying two fish and five body loaves. I think the text is saying no. The real miracle came after the two fish and the five body loaves were multiplied. Because Dr. Barclay wanted me to answer the question tonight or today, whenever they see it, he wanted me to answer the question, uh, what happens when God leaves you? What's the message when you have leftovers? When your needs have been met, when when God has met you at your need, when God shows up in the midst of your crisis, when God make a way out of no way, what happens when God leaves you? Leftovers. Watch the correlation between 11 and verse number 12. I'm on my way to my seat. Watch this. Jesus took the load. Watch it now. Jesus took the load. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples. And he told his disciples, go distribute them to everybody that's sitting down. Because the ones that's sitting down have the spirit of expectation. Because if you believe that you're going to be fed, you'll go sit down somewhere. And if you go sit down somewhere, you're going to be the recipient of the miracle. You're going to be a recipient of the wonder. You're going to be a recipient of what God is going to do. But watch this. The text says at verse number 11, they ate all that they wanted to eat. Amen. All right, y'all saw that? They, 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 ate it at, they ate as many fish as they could swallow. Watch this. And, and not only that, but they were filled with as much as they wanted. Now, now, now Christ is saying, of the text is saying, John is saying, not only did they did they eat to satisfaction, but they ate in abundance. Y'all got that? They, they ate in abundance as much as they wanted. It wasn't like what's left. No, whatever is left is everything that you need and more. Is anybody getting this? Okay, they ate as much as their appetite could. Take him. You see, they ate as much as they wanted. But watch the correlation between 11 and verse number 12. So when, the same ones, when they were filled, watch what he said. He said to his disciple, go back to the ones that ate as much as they wanted. Go back to the same ones that ate till they were full. Go back to the same ones that ate in abundance. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to get something back from them. Okay, y'all trying to miss this, but I ain't going to let you miss it. Okay, 5,000 plus came out there. They ain't got nothing. Christ performed a miracle, a sign, a wonder, multiplied two feet, five barley loaves, gave it to his disciples. His disciples gave it to people that didn't have anything. People who were broke, people who were flat, people who didn't have a dime in their pocket, people who didn't have two pennies or two nickels to rub together. He said, give them everything that they need. Feed them in this crisis, provide for them through this crisis, in the midst of this pandemic, make sure they have everything that they need. Let them know that I'll meet them at their need, not in good time, but also in bad time, not in fair weather, but also in foul weather, not when everything is going well, but when everything is going left. Let them know that I can meet them at their need in the midst of their struggle, in the midst of their their strength, in the midst of their predicament, in the midst of their mess. Let them know that I'll provide for every need that they have. But watch this, brothers and sisters, because verse number 12 is in reverse. What happens at verse number 12? He say, disciples go back to the ones that didn't have nothing because they got something now to offer. Okay, y'all trying to miss it, but I ain't going to let you miss it. Verse number 12 is right here. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, go back to the ones that didn't have nothing and go get everything. All right. All right. All right. Because the people that made it through the crisis, 
the people uh, that were satisfied in the crisis to the people that saw the sufficiency of Jesus Christ in the midst of their pandemic. Go back to the people that, that stuck it out. Go back to the people that stayed with Jesus Christ. Go back to the people that stuck with Jesus Christ. Go back to the people that were faithful, that were disciplined enough to sit down and wait for God to make a way out of no way. Go back to the people that waited on God to provide. Go back to the people that looked forward to what God was going to do. Go back to the people that was waiting on the promise of God because now they have have something to offer to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave to them. Now after the crisis, they ought to have something to give back. Y'all trying to miss it. I'm preaching my sermon and ain't nobody helping me right here. Go back to the ones that saw the hand of God. Go back. What The question is, what happens when God leaves your leftovers? Go back to the ones that's got some leftovers. Why? Because when God gives you leftovers, he letting you know that not only does he meet you at your need, but you're going to have enough for somebody else. God going to do something in your life. And you in turn going to do something for somebody else's life. God going to give you a test. So that you can have a testimony and your testimony may feed somebody else. God going to put a praise in your mouth so that you can turn around and give him glory. Give him honor and give him some praise. God going to do something in your life and you in turn going to do something for the kingdom's sake. You're going to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to be a blessing to somebody else. Y'all trying to miss it, but I'm going to make sure you get it before I take my sanctified seat right here. Verse number 12. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. He said, go back to the people that received something. He said, go gather of the fragments. Y'all see fragments right there? Well, fragment ain't fragment. What's fragment, Brother Daniels? There's a Greek term right there. He said, go back and get the leftovers. Go back and get, watch this, the run over. Go back and get the abundance. <clears throat> Y'all ain't saying that. Go back and get more than they received. What did they receive? Well, they received two fish and five barley loaves. But what are they going back to collect? They're going back to collect more than they started with. Okay, what happens when God leaves you left over? God will bring you through some stuff. And when God bring you through something, God wants you to have more than you had when you started. But Brother Daniels, we went through a pandemic, we went through stuff, and, and the church cleared out. Uh, that's okay. You got to understand that the ones that sat down had something to offer. The ones that believed in Jesus Christ, the ones that trusted his amazing grace, the ones that believed in the power of his word, the one that stood on the promises of God, they had something to give back to the church. Y'all trying to miss it, but I ain't going to let you miss it. Listen. Uh, in short, this miracle right here, verse 12, he said, go back and get the abundance. Uh, this means that the people that ate and were filled also were the people that contributed to the leftovers. Okay, so after the pandemic, we have actually more than we started with. Well, Brother Daniel, that can't be right. Um, it's about a third of our church came back. It's about 25% of us came back. And Brother Daniels, uh, uh, the membership ain't what the membership uh, used to be. Listen, everybody didn't sit down. Y'all didn't understand. Everybody didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Everybody didn't have the spirit of expectation. Everybody didn't really have faith in God. Notice in this passage, notice in this text, the only ones that got fed were the ones that sat down. Good God Almighty. So in the aftermath of pandemic, in the aftermath of the predicament, in the aftermath of the crisis, we actually have more than what we started with. Why? Because Barclay wanted me to answer the question, what happens when God leaves your leftovers? When God leaves your leftovers, he's letting you know that we have greater in terms of our quality. 
Okay, because at verse number 12, he, he says that those uh, uh, disciples went back and they gathered the abundance that remained so that nothing is lost. What you mean lost? He said, we're going to get more back than we had in the start. And watch this. He said, I don't want anything to go to waste. I don't want anything to be lost in the sauce. I don't want anything to fall by the wayside. Well, Brother Daniels, can you make this a little bit plainer for him? Because you got to close your message. I, I, I'm going to do the best I can right here. Uh, uh, he's trying to make sure that you understand that, that your testimony of what you saw God do actually makes the discipleship better and stronger. Okay, we have more qualitatively, we may not have more quantitatively. You see, we got a better child of God, we have a better Christian because their faith have been tried by fire. And God got leftovers to prove that not only does he meet us at our need, but David said, he restored my soul and my cup runs over so now we have people that have more word than they had before now we have people that have more trust than they had before now we have people that have bigger and better testimonies than they had before now we have people that not only praise god but these are people that are giving god the highest praise why because god would give you leftovers to prove that he's able to meet your at your need and not only that god approved that he will exceed your need and if you're a child of god even on tonight you must declare you must proclaim that you're better stronger wiser than you was before that you're giving god more honor no praise more glory before you got some leftovers you got leftover testimony you got leftover praise you got leftover glory you got a leftover anointing you got leftover power you got leftover praise you got leftover word good god almighty everything that god has done in your life through this season of a pandemic it has increased you it has made you better it has made you stronger it has made you wiser it had made you a better child of god it had made you a better praiser it has made you a better worshiper don't tell me that god won't give you no leftover because this is proof positive that god would get back from you more than he gave you why because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world the apostle paul said i can do what all things through christ that gives me the strength and if i were you right now i would declare i will proclaim I would testify that I'm giving God more now than I did pre-pandemic. Is that your testimony, brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I preach more now than I did before the pandemic. I got more bread now than I had before the pandemic. I have more glory now than I had before the pandemic. I have more testimonies now than I had before the It's right there at verse number 12. He said, go back and get what they got to give back. I gave to them and now they're going to give to me. I'm offering better. I'm loving better. I'm forgiving better. I'm trusting better. Yeah, am I in here by myself on tonight or today, whatever time it is today? Uh, are, are you a better child of God? Are you a better Christian? Are you a better husband? Are you a better wife? Are you a better child of God? Are you a better child, period? Are you a better servant? Are you a better servant to Almighty God? Are you a better leader? Are you a better teacher? Are you a better preacher? Are you a better worship leader? Are you a better a child of God? Are you better, stronger, wiser than you ever was before? Bible wanted me to let you know. God wanted me to let you know that when God leaves your leftovers, it's because he wants you to give back to him more than he has ever given to you. And somebody said, you can't be God given no matter how hard you even try. But the Bible is telling us at, at, at verse number 12 of chapter number 6 of the book of John that if you but trust him, God will put more in you so that you will have more to give back to the kingdom of God. And I hope, trust, pray that I said something along the way that have encouraged you, that have edified you, that have touched your heart.
that have touched even your soul. And I want to tell you, child of God, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be demoralized. God is doing something in the midst of this pandemic. God is doing something in the midst of this predicament that is producing a better us, a greater glory, a higher praise, a richer worship. We have bread to give back to the kingdom of God. Our neighbors going to be blessed. Our co-workers going to be blessed. Our haters going to be blessed. Our friends going to be blessed. Our Families are going to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go to our Father, even in prayer. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we now come. We come lifting holy hands. We declare that you are God beside you. Truly, there is none other. Father God, we just want to thank you right now for this miracle, for this sign, for this wonder of the feeding of the 5,000. Through which and by which, Father God, we understand and know that not only do you meet us at our need, but you also exceed our knees and father god we're praying we're hoping we're trusting uh that father god you'll use us in a very powerful way that in as much as you perform the miracle in our lives father god will turn right back around to perform ministry for the lives of other people thank you right now thank you for this conference thank you for the word that went forth may it find a lodging place in the hearts minds spirits and souls of all of your children all of your people everywhere to you be the praise to you be the honor and to you be every ounce of the glory this is our prayer this is our plea our petition in jesus name we kneel it all to the cross let every soul say amen Amen and amen. Thank you, Rich Bob Clay, for this opportunity, for this privilege to share uh, God's word. And thank you so very much for your gift to the brotherhood. Thank you for all that you do for the kingdom's sake. We are better kingdom, better church, better preachers, better teachers because of your service to Almighty God. May the Lord watch between us while we're absent from one another. It's always our prayer. Be blessed.